Right, first thing we need to do is using Duas, we'll install Tesseract. And I've previously installed it anyway, so it'll come up as uh, we're at the, the most recent version of the package is already installed. And you might want to add Tesseract data just in case it doesn't pull it in when you initially install. I'll just clear that. Right, we're going to create our own uh, PNG file with some text. The text is from the package description. Um, just format it down there. I'm just going to export it as a PNG. The higher quality the graphics file, the better, as it makes it easier for Tesseract to uh, to see the letters. So I'm just going to save it to the desktop as uh, change the name to example. I think. There we go. And there it is. It's got a transparent background at the moment, so uh, but that's not a problem. What we'll do, we'll change that. I'm just going to put it into a folder so we can keep tabs of uh, where we are. i just open up a terminal in the folder. There it is. Rearrange that so we can see what's going on. And let's lower that down, actually, I think. Yeah. Right, okie doke. What we need to do now is to use Tesseract. We're going to tell it to process the example PNG uh, into a text file called test. And there we are, that was really quick. And if you want to look at some of the other examples and, and uh, configurations, you just type help and the options you see. So here we are, we can actually got a, a new text file. And if we open it up, it should contain what we put into the PNG, and it does. We can compare the original PNG with, oops, just a little bit more, with a new text file. Um, yeah, it looks about the same. I can't see no errors. So they are, it's uh, taken the text from a graphics file and dumped it to a text file. Well, there might be slight, yeah, I think it's missed out a space between it is, but still, not too bad. But yeah, and maybe the spacing's a bit off, but yeah, okay, that's not so bad at all. Now for something, uh, Something a bit more challenging. Uh, sometimes you can uh, get a PDF where you can't highlight the the text in it. And here we have a, a simple PDF of a slow cooker uh, manual. And we're going to use convert. And convert is part of the image magic uh, suite. And we're going to use density. Convert density. 300. So we're telling it to be a high quality document. High resolution. With a depth of 8. And strip. Which means we're going to tell it to strip any graphics off. And we're going to change the background to white. Which will make the uh, text stand out easily for Tesseract to process. And we're going to turn the alpha channels off. And then we're going to tell it to call it Test2 TIFF. Nice high resolution uh, image format. We have to wait a while and there it is. All the pages from the PDF are actually stored into that uh, TIFF uh, image file as, as separate layers. Right, we tell the Tesseract to process the TIFF file and output it as test2 text file. And there you go. And hopefully, when we open it up, it should contain everything that was in the original PDF document. Well, it looks okay so far. And this will be useful, for instance, we wanted to take out a, uh, a recipe or an example um, cooking guide from the manual, but you don't really want to print the entire manual out. So there's the original manual. It's just a lovely, lovely slow cooker. And if we look, uh, we'll find another bit. Um, warning stone ball cannot be stand. Okay. So we'll look for that. And 
Yeah, there is that. Warning. Highlighted in blue. Very good so far. And there it is. So really for... I mean, all right, fair enough. I mean, the first example was a simple graphics file, but just using a uh, PDF is it, quite effective. If we look at the Tesseract uh, option I didn't cover before, the help, and you put list languages, it will show you all the languages um, that you can process in a document. It doesn't have to be English. It's quite, quite extensive. Anyway, that's how you do a quick OCR in FreeBSD. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Well done if you've made it to the end of the video, and if you've found it useful in any way, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure you don't miss future videos, then please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. This helps the channel grow so that I can keep on making content that helps the FreeBSD community grow as well. Yeah.